Welcome everybody. Uh, thank you for being here. I will uh, use the next 15 minutes to share my my experience in building more secure software in in an agile um, environment. Before getting into into the story, let me introduce myself. Uh, I'm Mihai Roman. I'm chapter lead at ING, and I'm leading a team of uh, dev engineers, which they have a quite interesting uh, purpose. They have to ensure the safety and security of uh, ING online channels. Uh, looking in retrospective, uh, 10 years ago when I started my career in software development, all the projects that I was part of, they were done in a uh, waterfall way. With the time we, we moved to Agile and these days different teams are taking uh, different approaches. In, uh, if we look at the team itself, so yeah, we have DevOps, DevSecOps, and some of the companies. In some of the companies, we have also the the business colleagues in the same uh, in the same team. Taking this into account, how the methodologies uh, evolve during the time. If we look at the project, at what it's happening in 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 a project during the delivery of a project, everything usually starts with a problem. And then we go through different um, stages till we reach the moment that we all are waiting for, the, the go live, when we have our um, work available for our, uh, our clients. If we just look at this picture, some of you would say, yeah, but okay, we are talking about agile and security, but what you show us here, it's a, it's a pure waterfall uh, project. Indeed, it is. But if we look at Agile, the, the big difference between Waterfall and Agile is the fact that we do the same steps, but in shorter cycles, in, uh, in sprints. We move from Waterfall to Agile, but we still have to talk about security. I'm asking myself from time to time, I would say too often, where security fits in a project. Uh, my team, a couple of uh, months ago, came with uh, with an idea. It came from nowhere, and they've they've suggested, let's try to hack the backlog. I said, okay, what that means? Uh, before getting into that, meet my team. Just keep it simple. I have John, which is a brilliant engineer, and I have Anonymous, which is as well a brilliant engineer, but it's a special engineer. It's an evil engineer. Some of you would ask what that means, an evil engineer. Uh, in order to keep it simple, we can make the analogy with um, an ethical hacker. So how started everything? They were quite, quite upset after um, they received the results of a pen test. They looked at it and it was looking bad. And they said, OK, that's not possible. We've worked for so many days and so many hours and we kind of failed, so it's not it's 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 not good. And Anonymous came with this idea of evil engineer. So okay, cool, but how that will uh, will end up in um, in our backlog in the team backlog? If we look at the backlog, in the past we just had the the top part, the stories, where everything it was about building something or making something performant enough, uh, making sure that we can run it properly in production. Now that we have our living engineer, we have to give him also some work, some stories. And here are coming the evil stories. If we look at them, if the team tried to do something amazing, I would say. They wanted to have one story where they deliver some functionality, but they want also to have one evil story where they will try to break that functionality or confirm that it's, uh, it's secure enough to, to have it for, um, for our customers, to have it available there. First planning went fine. Second went less good. And then people were uh, starting to ask themselves, where I can find my inspiration, how I can find my knowledge, how I can grow my knowledge in security so I'm able to create evil stories for future. Short question for you. How many of you are aware about OWASP? Ooh, quite a lot. That's, I will take it as a good sign. Uh, so 
most of you know that the, their main goal is to, to help everybody in the industry to build secure software or to improve their security in their, uh, in their software. Uh, they've released last year, um, sorry, two years ago, the, a new version of the OWASP Top 10. If we look back to 2013 and 2017, the top two vulnerabilities are still there. So we are not doing that, that, that good job at this moment. So we have to work, we have to work uh, more on, uh, on our security. Uh, the team looked at this and said, OK, we know them. We know what can go wrong if we have one of these vulnerabilities. But OK, we need more, more concrete things to, to improve our security, to build more secure software. So uh, one of the guys found this. It's also an OWASP project, the security knowledge framework. And the, the engineers like it very much. And it's due to a simple thing. It's also hands-on. So it's not just reading some, uh, some theory and understanding some concepts, but you have also examples. So they offer let's say the four main categories where you you can start building a, a checklist for your new application where you have your security requirements and depending on what you need for example if you need session management you will have a certain uh, list from where you can uh, you can choose but the most two important that i enjoy are the the one at the bottom uh, the code and the labs uh, in the code they explain of vulnerability, but they also offer um, examples of how you can solve that. And uh, with their uh, one of their latest releases, they uh, they've enriched the languages that they support. So now they have, I think, Python, Java, and .NET. Or it's possible that I'm missing uh, one of them. But the last one, the labs there, that's something that it's very useful on the long term because you start to grow your engineers and you start to increase their uh, their security knowledge. Uh, there are options there to start from a small uh, a small application till you go to something uh, complex where you can cover more than uh, uh, three to five uh, vulnerabilities from, from top 10. If we take a step back now, we've discussed about methodologies, how we build software. We've discussed about the evil stories and uh, the role of the evil engineer in a team. We have some knowledge now, let's say, how to build more secure software. But how we can confirm that what we have built, it's secure enough. So what, what's coming next? So there are two, two points which were, um, were raised. One is I want to have a way to create a definition of done from the security perspective, and I need a, a tool or something that helps me. And um, the second point is, I hate doing things twice. So we need to find a way to, to automate. So we went back to, to OWASP, and we found this. It's, it's, it's ZAP, it's the Z attack proxy. Uh, we started with, uh, with baby steps, we've used Zap to um, to test our applications. We've looked at the two main things that they have now. They have the active scan and the passive scan. So we've started simple. We just took the default rules, and we've we've put it them in our applications. It was okay, but then we realized that we still we are still missing some some scenarios that are not covered how we want it. So we went more into the details, and we we discovered that we can extend the rules, the default rules that are, uh, are available in, uh, in ZAP. That was nice, but still, someone that was playing the role of the evil engineer in that sprint had to do something manual. It was supposed to open the project, run it against the, the build, and guess what? It happened a couple of times when it was running the, uh, the test, that someone else deployed a new version. So everything went wrong. So they had to, to start it again and again. We want to do things simpler. So we found a friend for ZAP, Jenkins. I think most of you know it. So ZAP is offering um, 
a plugin for Jenkins, which allows you to to integrate your security testing in your um, in your pipeline. So as I've as I've mentioned about the issue of testing, and then in the same time someone was deploying a new version, we've went one step further. We've put um, the projects that we already had built uh, in Zap. We put it in uh, in our pipeline. So more or less our uh, pipeline looks like this. So we have our entire build deployment and then we have another job in Jenkins which is triggering the security testing. So at this moment we are confident that when we are doing a testing we are doing on a version and that version will not change uh, in, the middle, uh, in the middle of the test. Uh, it's something that we've learned the hard way. Uh, be very careful when you run the the active scan, even with the default rules, the active scan it's 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 heavy on your application. So you could end up in simply killing your uh, your uh, your application in uh, in that environment. Uh, why is that? It's the active scan. It's using the known um, technique attacks, and they, it's applying it for uh, for your application. With with after we've done that, we've started to play a little bit with also with the reporting in in a way to to use also to help uh, our security team, our pen testers, uh, because yeah, even if we do that, we still need someone which is specialized in doing pen testing to do the final check. But we made their life a little bit easier. We provided them the report also including the findings that uh, were discovered from in the last versions we also provided them what we have done and then they had more time in focusing in applying other techniques that we could not cover by um, by using the the zap uh, the proxy uh, before closing it uh, Anonymous, my dear evil engineer, has some some recommendations for you. Introduce this role in uh, in your teams. Help that person that it's having that role to define the stories, and it's not only for one sprint. Try to have it on a longer term. Uh, it's gonna have also fun factor. Because it's not just, I have to build something, I have to build something, I have to break something in the end. So last but not least, try to automate. And by automation, include also your, uh, your security testing there. We don't like to do things three times in the same, in the same day. So automate, automate them. Uh, that was it from my side. Thank you and happy backlog hacking. Thank <laughs> you.